Shabbos, everybody. Welcome back. Parshas Bracious. We have the incredible incident of the eating from the tree of knowledge. God speaks to man, to Adam, and he tells him that from all of the trees you may eat except for the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Man conveys this unto his wife, unto Chava. And then it states that the Nochash, the serpent, was Orum, Mikol Chayas Hasod. He was the wisest, the shrewdest from all of the living animals found in the fields. And he speaks to the woman and he says, Is it true that God said, You may not eat from any of the trees in the garden? And the woman responds and says, Me creates a gonoichel. From the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat. But from the fruit of the tree in the center of the garden, that's the tree of knowledge, God said, We may not eat of it, we may not touch it, for lest we die. The question is: the verse tells us that the serpent was shrewd, he was orum, shrewd, he was wise. Where do we see the great wisdom in his words? What did he say? They're eating from the fruits, and he says, is it true that God said you cannot eat from any of the fruits? Well, if we can't eat from the fruits and what grows, what are we supposed to perish, starve? Where is the great wisdom? The Torah at this particular point is introducing man to the evil, to the Satan, to the distractions, but more than that, to the method of the Satan. For we are told that indeed it was this angel, this Satan, that possessed or was riding on the snake, manifested itself within the snake. And the Torah is showing us its approach. There was great wisdom that he came. Yes, of course, he saw that they were eating from the fruits. But he said, you can eat from everything, correct? Oh, yes. But you can't eat from that tree of knowledge in the center. That's correct. Well, then, if that's the case, then it's as if God said you cannot eat from any of the fruits. Why? Because I am telling you that the most delicious, the most magnificent, the most exciting flavor that your palate could ever experience is found within the tree of knowledge. And if you are denied that pleasure, then it's as if you are denied all pleasures. You think you're satisfied, you're eating from a fig tree, an apple tree, whatever it might be. You don't know what you're missing. You might as well be denied everything. So if someone would say you can't eat any fruits or vegetables, what you can eat is wood and grass. You don't know what you're missing. That's method number one. Method number two, he says, if indeed, you're not allowed to eat from the tree of knowledge. That tree of knowledge was the original tree that God created. And everything else was an offshoot, as if God took branches from the tree of knowledge, planted them in the ground, and out came the other trees. And if that's the case, and if you cannot eat from the tree of knowledge, you can't eat from anything else. If you cannot participate with this, then what makes you think the other things are permissible? You think you comprehend the word of God? Third method. He says, you're not allowed to eat from all the fruits. She says, no, 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 we can eat. We just can't eat from the tree of knowledge. He says, no, that's ridiculous. You were created on day six. You and Adam and man. I was created on the fifth day. I came into existence before you did. And I know things 
of God's methods and ways that you have no concept. And I'm telling you that this of which you were told by your husband that you're not allowed to eat, not true. That's not the intent of God. He wants to deny you. Adam wants to deny you. He wants to discipline you. He wants to curb you and to see that you are under his control. I'm testifying that indeed all of the fruits are permissible, even that of the tree of knowledge. To which the woman answers and says, we are permitted to eat from all the fruits, except for that which is in the center, the tree of knowledge. Meaning that I believe my husband, he would not lie to me. And you're testifying against him? Well, your testimony is in question, not his. Why should I doubt him? In addition, let's assume that all the trees indeed were offshoots from branches and twigs that came from the tree of knowledge. Nevertheless, God said, we can eat them. It's just the tree of knowledge itself we can't eat. So then what's the difference what their origin is? It's still permissible. And you're telling me that God is denying me of the great pleasures? I believe that God is only and the essence of all that is good. And if God is telling me that I should discipline myself and refrain from this tree of knowledge, then it must be in my best interest. But the evil inclination, this Satan, is very shrewd. We know what happened. It says he pushed her against the tree and then he introduced her to the tree. She saw that this tree was unique and incredible. And the, what the evil inclination, what the Satan does, his wisdom, where he's so shrewd, is that he comes to plant doubt, create doubt within the heart, the soul, the mind of the most trusting, of the most loyal individual, create an element of doubt. I'm telling you. You want, you think you want to keep kosher? You want to be an observant Jew? You don't know what you're missing. You don't know the pleasures of life that you will be denying yourself. Various cultures and travel and eating and all of these exotic restaurants and experiencing so much. You don't know what you're missing. This is the serpent today. And should we say, if God says that it's unacceptable for me, it must be in my best interest. And he says, well, if it's a discipline you're looking for, what makes you think that you're so wise? You're an ordinary, simple person. You don't know the Talmud. You don't know the Shulchan Aruch. You don't know all the Torah. You know a few things you learned here, you learned there. Let me tell you. If you're going to live a life of discipline and denial, then this will be prohibited and that will be prohibited and there's no end to it. These are the words of the modern day serpent. And if we say, I put my faith and trust in the words of our sages, who I know would only present that which is true and in my best interest, he says, what makes you think your sages are so wise? There's great sagacity found within other elements and paths within life. Look at the great philosophers. Look at the great scientists. Look what we've achieved. Look at our technology. And these great people with all of their knowledge are saying that this religion that you're looking for and pursuing, that's not going to be the source of your success and happiness. On the contrary, that's where you'll end up with confusion. And that's where you'll end up with denial and living a life in which you have not enjoyed any of the pleasures. This is the Yetzahara. This is the evil inclination, the very same Satan that came and made the proposition unto Chava, to the first woman to Eve in the Garden of Eden. And he comes and he speaks to us today. How is it possible that Chava, the creation of God, the perfect woman, 
how could she fall victim to this words of the Satan when she herself knew God told me this, my husband told me this, it's got to be in my best interest. The answer is because she was 100% pure and holy. She didn't know that there existed an element of evil in the world. She wasn't aware that there was a Satan, that there would be a source to challenge and distract mankind. She assumed that if this animal that indeed existed on day five before she and her husband were created, perhaps he is speaking something of validity and truth. It should be listened to. And she was innocent like a child who has no idea, a trusting child to whom an adult might say something and tell something, tell them to do something which is not in their best interest. Child doesn't know, they're innocent, they're naive. She also had this element of naivety, not because she wasn't brilliant, but because she wasn't aware there existed an element of evil, a Satan. But we know that there exists a Yetzirah, an evil inclination. We know that God created this angel, this Satan, to challenge us constantly and to place us with confrontations and a struggle. And therefore, we must listen to the initial response of Chava, which is, if God has said to me, and I trust wholeheartedly the source from which it has come, from Adam to whom God has spoken, and if he has said this to Adam, who has transmitted it to me, and this is my tradition, it is in my best interest. And whatever I'm denied is good for my soul, it's good for my body, it's good for my well-being, it's good for my success and happiness. And everything that I am taught is designed for my success. If we have been taught from our sages and parents and grandparents, if thousands of years of Jewish tradition have presented to us the Jewish way, this is what we eat. This is where we live. This is how we speak. This is how we dress. This is where we go. This is where we don't go. That means it's in our best interest that our happiness will not be found in those places which are all part of our imagination. They'll be found, happiness is not found elsewhere, it's found within. It's found within our own comfort. It's found within our own serenity, within our own homes and surroundings, with friends, with family, with children, with grandchildren, with parents and grandparents. That's where happiness is found, true happiness. And this is achieved when we say, what's the blueprint for my happiness? Where are the instructions? The instructions are God's divine word, his Torah, as delivered to us by Moshe Rabbeinu, as we all experienced at Sinai, as we are aware of God's love for us by virtue of the exodus of Egypt and all the miracles he's performed. So yes, that serpent from the Garden of Eden was very shrewd, and he's just as shrewd today. Knows exactly which buttons to push. He knows how to tell us, oh, but you're missing out. What do you mean? You got to find out. Got to go to your chat room. You got to go to Facebook. You got to go here. Got to go there. Got to see what's going on and everything. We need to listen and to the words of God's Torah and we need to cling to our tradition and the Jewish way. Therein lies our success and happiness. This is what the Torah is presenting to us, not just a story of the past, but it's presenting to us the method and the means for our success and happiness for all generations. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay Jewish. Have a good Shabbos.